So nice of you to join me again there, travelers. Come, come along. Today, we're going to be uncovering the secrets behind My Hero Academia. They range anywhere from the tiniest of details on the show to what makes the show such a Detroit smash hit. Ha ha! Ha! Already on the fun games, yes. Now keep in mind, I will only cover what has been shown in the anime and not in the manga, so there won't be too many spoilers. So for now, let's go! Let's start with something shocking, shall we? You all know everyone's favorite little frog waifu, yes? Well, what if I said that she's been hiding a terrible and dark secret this entire time? And it is the fact that she is not a waifu, but a husbando! That's right! It's a trap! That's right! Every well-known anime must have at least one to boost itself in sales. It's a scientific fact! Added to this, according to the author, she was originally intended to be a boy. But by some stroke of genius, all the fact that the show was already a massive sausage fest. They put boobs on the little froggo. And some other interesting little tidbits. In the first and second Japanese popularity poll, she produ uh, produced a result of the sixth and ninth place. However, in the US, she placed second and fifth. It looks like us Americans have some good taste. All just really like frogs. Next, we'll have to look at our hero, Izuku, otherwise known as Deku. He is a strange anomaly, and I find it curious that everyone seems to like the boy. Oftentimes, shonen protagonists are just carbon copies of the same basic traits found in every other one. Kind, average, plain, not particularly good at anything. The basic self-insert protagonist. But I found something that makes Deku stand out from the rest of the others. I managed to take a sample of his DNA and found out that he had been spliced with an adorable little puppy dog. Upon further study, his traits and actions all follow suit with this certain discovery. It is his undying loyalty for any form of love and affection. Specifically with this character he calls Kajan. No matter how much abuse this man puts him through, Deku seems happy to leap into him at a moment's notice and smother him with love. Perhaps this is Deku's true quirk as well. The ability to be a darn good boy. And speaking of this notorious Karchan, I have been tracking his whereabouts as well. Why is it that people like this little boy so much that he was voted number one in not only the second, but also the third popularity poll? Is it the spiky Naruto protagonist here? Believe it! The fact that he screams constantly like Asta from Black Clover? Or is it that he has as much firepower as Natsu from Fairy Tale? Hmm, it could potentially be any number or combination of those. But I believe that I have found out the true reason why he is so popular. It is something that is so rarely found in anime nowadays. A male tsundere. That's right, behind the mask of all the death threats of Murder, death, kill, boy. There lies a little sweetheart that really wants Deku to notice him. Now we all know how popular an anime tsunderis are. Why, in fact, there can't be a single one of them here nowadays without at least one, possibly two in them. However, this applies mostly to the females. If you think about it, the true answer has been there, right in front of our face this entire time. It's been in his name. Baka 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 Go! Well, there's also another little wild card that his popularity stems from his really hot mom, but wait, wait a minute. 
That's not a spoiler, is it? Next, we must look at this totally unique and in no way similar character compared to anything else. Todoroki. What really makes him unique is his burn scar over his bishi exterior. Checks really dig scars. He also comes complete with huge daddy issues of an even more powerful fire wielder. Did I mention how edgy and emo he is? Never really smiling because of his dark and tragic backstory. Oh, and don't even get me started on his journey to find himself and redemption to... What? <laughs> Hold on. You're telling me I've been showing the wrong character this entire time? Well, that's embarrassing. Now, this next one has been hard to track. You could even say that she easily escapes the eye. Mainly because she's invisible. That's right. Toru Hagakure, or the Invisible Girl. This one is quite the anomaly. I have been trying and trying to get this data, but she proves to be very elusive. The main mystery here is even though nobody knows what she looks like, people still find her attractive. It's as if it's a new, evolved form of fetish. A girl wearing clothes, but there is no girl. How bizarre! Another mystery is how much of her is truly invisible. If she eats food, does it immediately turn invisible when it touches her mouth? Or can you see it as it's mashed into paste by her teeth and then go down into her belly? Or what about her hair and her nails? When she cuts it, does it remain invisible? Is it the same with her excrement? Invisible poop is a very dangerous power indeed. But one thing that I do know for certain is that to fully go invisible, she has to go in the buff! That's right. Perhaps you could be apprehended by a naked invisible girl someday. Ooh, how spicy. Let's move on to one very irregular element in all of this. Something so outlandish that I'm not even sure why it's there. But it is. Mineta, or Grape Boy. If you don't know, his power is his sticky balls. That's right. He flashes his balls proudly on his head wherever he goes. Also the fact that his body appears to be that of a little toddler compared to the rest of his class. Heck, even his super suit has a diaper on it. But I think I know the reason behind it. It's simply because all of the testosterone from his body travels into his balls. The ones on his head, come on now. It also explains why he's so constantly girl hungry with it passing through his head all the time. Also, the lack of testosterone to help him advance towards puberty is gone since he throws it away constantly, thus contributing more to his toddler-like appearance. He is certainly a strange anomaly in this universe. But hey, there is also Weasel Man and Birdface, so I guess anything goes here. And finally, one last mystery I need to discuss here is All Might. Not the character, mind you, but the fact that if you ingest some of his hair, you then can gain his superpower. However, is Deku really the first one to ingest this and become an All Might? Or were there ones that were before him? And no, I'm not talking about the other All Mights, I'm talking about this one right now. Has really nobody in all of his fights not consumed a little bit of it, or perhaps something else. Now, let's just exclude all the nasty stuff like saliva, blood, and sweat, and any sort of excrement out there. Let's not go there. But let's focus on what hair is made of. That's right, protein. And you want to know something else that has a whole lot of protein? Something that comes out of his rod of justice. Are we to believe that All Might has never had any sort of physical relation with another partner, man, woman, trap, or perhaps attack helicopter? Would they not have gotten a load of justice from him 
during this process? Or has been All Might been too devoted to Lady Liberty? That also happens to rhyme with virginity. Who can say? But maybe the source of his power really stems from him becoming a 30-year-old virgin and thus becoming a wizard. Now certainly there are more, plenty more mysteries that remained. Like said, Toga, this smug, yondery evil woman that just wants to suck you, and not in the good way. But we'll save that for another time. There will be plenty of mysteries to come considering that the show is still running, but we are sadly out of time today. So, I hope all of you scouts out there have become a little more educated and a bit more learned. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see every one of you beautiful sons of guns again on the next adventure. Tally ho! You crazy mother. Yeah.